Howdy there, YouTubers. Um, while this is update or uploading, which is going to take forever because that last video I did is over 500 megabytes alone, um, I'll go ahead and give a sneak preview of the schematic to kind of give you a better concept of what's going on. So there is the the 483 on the driver board along with the serial direction register or well, the serial direction control line that way because this 485 is not duplex okay it's not you know it's not full duplex it's half duplex so you have to have you know the, the direction control and there's the termination resistor which is only used on the driver board at the end of the chain because it's as hard as 485 so there's the, five, the unique circuit here the 555 timer it's tied to the 24 volts through the threshold and discharge lines of the 555 timer and then there's the wiper pin for the 808400. Um, and then there's the clamper circuit so the, the AC1 and 2 can't, you know, exceed the VCC limit, which in this case is 5 volts. So, anyway, um, basically the only explanation I have for that circuit, it's really a unique way to um, eliminate the need of a filter capacitor. So, if we have the paint window open for a second, let's say we have a, you know, let's say we have a, a line, then say we do our arches. Mm, yeah, that's that's messed up. Yeah, you get you get the point. real quick. No! Fail! Fail! Rushes. Let's try this a different way. <laughs> so let's say you have your 120 hertz pulse coming through. Well, the PWM circuit is in synchronous with that pulse. So what you have is a pulse width, you know, of somewhat looking like that now that's that's a disaster but you get what I'm point uh, my point is that's the output coming from the timer into the uh, the 7400 and gate or well, NAND gate because the atmel can actually turn off the output of the digits with that NAND gate um, so what we have is the pulse width going to the output chips which since it's going to NAND it's going to be converted but you get the idea because the chips are actually um, their uh, output enable is inverting anyway so um, anyway so what we have here is the on time of the chip is here and here that's the time that the chip is actually turned on the outputs of the chip are turned on and notice it's in synchronous with the 120 Hertz um, cycle from the line voltage that way you can eliminate beats and you can eliminate the requirement of a filter capacitor on the LED load supply line, which is what that is. It's what the 24 volts is for. Because the rest of the circuit, if you've seen in the previous video, is powered by a separate transformer. So the the 80-8400 here will actually um, adjust the on time, the width of these pulses. So that way we can actually take that and we can narrow it up so the LEDs don't appear as bright. So it gives you brightness control but it also gives you a current control of the LEDs. So you can actually set up the pulse width and take a meter and measure the voltage drop and the current across the LEDs and get this set to its absolute maximum that the LEDs require to reach full current without exceeding. So uh, that's pretty much of that in a nutshell. Uh, um, anyway, aside from that, there's really nothing else more to explain, except for there's the coil for the modem and then the op amp. If you notice, there's no outgoing. So this was clearly set up as a receive only, and that's the way the system worked. It was one-way communication. We're going to change that, but for now, that's what it is. 
Um, but really, that's all there is to it. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.